Good morning, friends. Uh, welcome, everyone, for today's webinar on export and import of goods, services, and currencies, the procedural aspect. So, uh, I mean, the two days back, there were uh, a webinar on import of goods, the regulations prescribed under FEMA for that. And uh, last week, there was a webinar on export as well. Uh, but uh, uh, specifically, procedural aspects were not considered because um, uh, the focus was not on on those things when it, when it was uh, uh, taken. So uh, we thought, uh, let us have a dedicated uh, webinar only on the procedural aspects relating to export and import uh, under FEMA. So uh, currencies, yes, there are no specified regulation as such. So whatever uh, we saw uh, in the earlier webinars uh, holds good for currencies as well. So we'll specifically focus on export and import of goods and services. So let's get started, friends. Before that, I would like to acknowledge the efforts of uh, Bharti and Anand for this uh, uh, presentation. The legends used in the presentation uh, are pretty similar to what uh, what were used in the earlier webinars. A few more additions that is Softex, that is uh, Software Exports, STPS Software Technology Parks of India, OPGSP Online Payment Gateway Service Providers, uh, FTWZ Free Trade Warehousing Zone, FATA Financial Action Task Force. Uh, Task Force. EDI electronic data interchange, EPZ export processing zone. So these were a few of the new uh, legends which were, which are used in this presentation, apart from what are there in the earlier webinars. Presentation schema for, for the day that we uh, including uh, the procedural aspects in exports and various type of exports, what are the regulations prescribed, the soft text forms, how the invoicing has to be, export of services, uh, export uh, declaration form, and the exemption provided, procedural aspects relating to imports, settlement uh, regulations, receipt of import documents, evidence of import, processing through OPGSP, that is online payment gateway service providers, and uh, settlement in case of few specified cases. So let's get started, friends. Introduction again uh, under FEMA, what comes into India as an export, uh, as an import, what goes from India to outside India as an, uh, as an export. Uh, FEMA, there are various regulations prescribed for export and import as we have saw, seen in the earlier webinars. The procedures involved in export of goods and services are laid down in Master Direction 16, 2015-16. And for imports, Master Direction 17, 2016 17. So that's what we, we're gonna uh, focus on in the next 25 30 minutes, both the Master Directions relating to the procedural aspects. Uh, as we have seen earlier in the schema as well, the procedural aspects, soft tax forms, exemption from export declaration, uh, procedural aspects in case of imports, receipt of import documents, evidence of imports, and verification of import evidence and payments. Uh, export of goods through custom foods. So, custom shall certify the value declared and provide a serial number on two copies of EDF form, which has been submitted by the uh, exporter at non electronic data interchange uh, a, a port that is non EDI port because specifically there are rules for export of goods through EDI port which we'll see later customs shall retain the ori original EDI for transmission to the RBI and return the duplicate copy to the exporter exporter shall submit the duplicate copy of the EDF to customs certifying after examining the goods the custom shall certify the quantity in the form and return to return it to the exporter for submission to ad for negotiation or collection of export bills within 21 days from the date of the export exporter shall lodge the duplicate copy together with relative shipping documents and an extra copy of the invoice to the uh, uh, authorized dealer bank named in the edf after that the edf shall report the transaction through EDP, that is Export Data Processing and Monitoring System, to the RBI and retain the documents that they are in. In case of exports made under deferred credit arrangement or to joint ventures abroad against equity participation or under rupee credit arrangement agreement, 
the number and date of the rbi approval shall be recorded at an appropriate place on the edf where duplicate copy of edf is misplaced ad may accept copy of duplicate edf duly certified by customs so friends here as you as you can see the exporter the customs are uh, the uh, uh, ad bank these are the three parties when it comes to uh, ex export of goods through customs so these are the three parties involved and uh, chronologically this has to be uh, followed it's not again uh, uh, in a haphazard way so the order has to be maintained for the purpose of exporting goods through uh, customs port export of goods software through edi ports earlier we have seen the non edi ports here we'll see the edi ports the shipping bill shall be submitted in duplicate to the authority concerned whoever is the concern authority it would be commission of customs or the sales if the export is made through sales after verifying of the and authenticating the the concern authority shall hand over to the exporter one copy of the shipping bill marked exchange control copy for being submitted to the ad bank within 21 days so after the authority uh, whoever is the concern authority uh, scrutinize the documents they will hand over one copy of the shipping bill marked as exchange control copy which has to be submitted by the exporter to ad bank within 21 days the manner of disposable of ec copy of shipping shall be same as that of for edf the duplicate copy of the form together with copy of image shall be retained by ad and may not be submitted to the rbi so here in this case this is what are the differential points friends uh, in uh, export of goods through customs we saw uh, they have to send a copy to rbi the ad bank after scrutinizing here they can retain the ad bank can retain and may not be submitted to the rbi export of goods through post Postal authorities shall allow export of goods by post only if the original copy of EDF has been countersigned by an AD. So this is a preliminary condition for uh, exporting the goods through post that the original copy of ED EDF has to be countersigned by an authorized dealer bank. The procedure relating to export of goods through post is as follows. Uh, AD shall countersign EDF after ensuring that the parcel has been addressed to the the branch or correspondent bank in the country of import and the return and return the original copy to the exporter who shall then submit the edf to the post office with the parcel so first of all they have to confirm the address to which it has to be imported that is exported and the country in which it has to be imported after that the original copy shall be exported to the uh, export uh, shall be provided to the exporter who shall then submit the edf to the post office with the parcel the duplicate copy of edf shall be retained by the ad to whom the exporter shall submit relevant documents together with an extra copy within 21 days the concerned overseas bank shall be instructed to deliver the parcel to consignee against payment or acceptance of relative bill ad bank however may countersign edf covering parcels addressed directly to consignees provided so it would not be uh, uh, through the uh, corresponding bank in the country of import but directly assigning to the consignees provided these uh, conditions are satisfied irrevocable letter of credit for the value full value of export has been opened in the favor of exporter and has been advised through the ad concern full value of shipment has been received in advance by the exporter ad satisfied on the basis of standing and track record of exporter and arrangements made for realization of export proceeds Particulars of advance payment letter of credit, AD certification of standing of the exporter should be furnished on the form under proper authentication. So if these conditions are satisfied, the countersign EDF covering parcels may be addressed directly to the consignees instead of the corresponding bank being in in between or being in uh, or uh, being as an intermediary. Any alteration in the name and address of consignee to the EDF form should also be authenticated by the AD. Soft text forms and invoicing. Uh, actually, what are soft soft text forms? As we saw, the full form uh, software export. All software exporters can now file single as well as bulk soft text forms in the form of a statement in Excel format to the competent authority for certification. As in, when there are export of software, it has to be that the exporter has to submit. It it can either submit single as well as the bulk soft text forms in a manner prescribed 
Since the software comes from HTPI, SCZ are being transmitted in electronic form, format to RBI, the exporters have to submit soft text forms in duplicate. HTPI SCZ will retain one copy and hand over duplicate copy to exporters after due certification. All the invoices, include, including the ones lesser than USD 25,000 in the bulk statement, needs to be uploaded. A common soft text form has been devised to declare single as well as bulk software exports. RBA has extended the facility for online generation of EDA form number and the softfax form number. So it's again entirely uh, online process. We'll see uh, subsequently as to how the process needs to be followed. The facility of manual allotment of single as well as bulk software form number by regional office of RBA has been dispensed. So earlier there was manual filings of uh, softfax form, but now it is strictly or mandatorily online. Steps to file soft text forms. We have to log in to stpionline.stpi.in using the new username password. If there is no username, we need to create. And while creating, we need to uh, attach these documents or provide these details like the directors, the board resolutions, the financial statements, the service agreement, the memorandum and articles, and other relevant documents to create a login. Once the login ID and password is generated, we can use the site for filing the soft text form. After we log into the site, on clicking on soft text form, the following screen will appear. The instructions can be used to download Excel CSV file format and fill up the. So there is a for Excel CSV file which needs to be downloaded, and all the details needs to be uh, keen in that uh, file, and then it has to be uploaded to the server that is the uh, STPI server, and an application ID would be generated that has to be kept for a so that would be a proof for the purpose of. Uh, any inquiry later uh, from RBI or AD Bank as the case may be. Invoicing of software exports, long duration contracts involving series of transactions. The exporters should bill their overseas clients periodically at least once a month or reaching a milestone. So in case there are like uh, a continuous activity being followed at least a month or reaching a certain milestone, there has to be invoicing. So it cannot be a case like uh, uh, the invoicing should happen at the end of uh, uh, end of the activity being performed. So there has to be periodically generation of invoices. And the last invoice should be raised not later than 15 days from the date of completion of contract. So once the contract is, is getting done, within 15 days, the final invoice needs to be raised. It would be in order for the expert to submit a combined soft text form for all the invoices raised on a particular overseas client in advance remittances received in a month. So for a particular client, all the soft text form, all the invoices raised, a combined soft text forms can be uploaded. So for a particular client, it cannot be a case like we can combine two, three clients and generate an uh, soft text form for all the invoices raised on two, three clients. No, it has to be a particular overseas client. All the invoices can be combined in a soft text form. For contracts involving only one short operation, the invoice should be raised within 15 days from the date of transmission. So it is again 15 days if at all. It's a one one off uh, operation for for providing software services. The exporter should de submit declaration in form software in quadruplicate in respect of export of computer software and audio video television software. So in case of uh, computer software and audio video television software, there has to be instead of duplicate, it, it has to be quadruplicate. Quadruplicate. Uh, uh, to the designated official concern to the uh, to the government of India. So again, here uh, the concern authority would be uh, a designated official which has been designated by the government of India for the purpose of valuation and certification within 30 days from the date of invoice or the date of last invoice raised in a month as indicated above. So here the the time limit instead of 15 days uh, increases increases to 30 days. Invoice raised on the OSIS claim will be subject to valuation of export declared on soft text forms and consequent amendment made in the invoices, invoice value if necessary. So has to be whatever submissions we make in soft text forms, the invoice should be, uh, I mean, uh, invoice raised should, should be in sync with the declarations made in the soft text form. There cannot be discrepancy uh, between the two. So that has to be ensured by the exporter as well. 
citing of uh, specific identification numbers in all applications content correspondence with the RBA as available on the EDF. So whenever uh, there is an export declaration form or soft tech forms, whatever the number gets generated that has that needs to be cited on all the correspondences with the RBA relating to that particular exports. Export of services to which none of the form apply. Uh, the exporter may export without furnishing any declaration, but shall be liable to realize. So in case of export of services where none of the forms are applicable, as we saw the ADF forms or the softex soft forms, they can export without furnishing any declaration, but shall be liable to realize the amount of foreign exchange and to repatriation. So realization repatriation condition would still prevail even if the declaration condition is not being uh, 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 not being required to be adhered realization of export proceeds from third party should be deal, uh, duly declared so in case of third party exports wherein uh, the export would be to to a third party instead of the person whom you are interacting with it has to be specifically mentioned in the edf form Random verification. Uh, the AD category, AD category bank can do a random uh, check on the on the forms and uh, documents submitted. In case it feels that there is non-realization or short realization, and that uh, so uh, the realization of proceeds are short or there is non-realization, they can do a random check to ensure why that is and uh, what exactly is the reason for that. Short shipments and shutout shipments. Short shipment in case uh, there is discrepancy in the quantity actually received and the quantity listed uh, on a shipping bill on a shipping list. So uh, when there is short shipment, when part of a shipment covered by an EDF already filed with consumption, then short ship uh, is short shipped. The exporter must give notice of short, short shipment to to the customs. So this has to be informed to the customer that there is short shipment uh, and and the quantity received is actually less than the quantity listed uh, in case of delay in obtaining uh, the certified uh, short shipment for a notice from the customer the exporter should give an undertaking to the ad banks to the effect that it has filed the stock uh, the short shipment notice with the customs and that it will furnish as it so after after we the exporter know uh, informing the customs they will give a certif certification to that effect that needs to be provided to the ad bank if that is not possible the notice or the notice which has been given to the customs that that will serve as a proof for the purpose of ad bank and as and when the certified copy is received of this notice this needs to be uh, submitted to the ad bank what is shutout uh, shipments takes place when exporter determines to shut the export movement after completion of export customs clearance so after the customs procedures are being done the exporter determines that okay it is it is not uh, necessary or uh, rather it is not possible to export the goods because of reasons being cancellation of export order non completion of uh, quality specifications or change of goods shipped or for any other reason the reasons can be anything in case after clearance or customs clearance the exporter decides not to export the goods so in that scenario when uh, the shipment is entirely shut out and there is delay in making arrangements to reship the export again uh, again there has to be a notice to be given to the customs but in duplicate attaching the unused duplicate copy of edf and shipping bill obviously the ef would have been generated or would have been filed so that duplicate copy of edf and the shipping bill needs to be submitted to the customs along with the notice that there is a shutout shipment the customs will verify that the shipment was actually shut out certify the copy as correct and forward it to rbi together with unused duplicate copy of the edf so here in this case it is not ad bank the customs will directly approach the rbi in case of shutout shipments and the original edf received earlier from customs will be cancelled if the shipment is made subsequently a fresh set of edf so in case after the the customs approach the rbi and uh, things are validated the original edf would be cancelled in case there is a reshipment of that goods a fresh edf needs to be generated so this would be the procedure in case of shutout shipments consolidation of air cargo and sea cargo in case of air cargo where air cargo shipped under consolidation the airline cus uh, companies uh, masterway 
master airway bill will be issued to a consolidating cargo agent the cargo agent will issue his own house to individual shippers the ad category one bank may negotiate the hawbs that is house airway bills only if the relative letter of credit specifically provides for negotiation of these documents in lieu of airway bills issued by the airline company again here consolidation of air cargo so uh, similar to uh, the soft tax form which we, we saw the clubbing of all the soft tax forms here when air cargo is shipped under consolidation this is the procedure needs to be followed again for c cargo ad category banks may accept forwarders cargo receipt issued by uh, the ita that is international air transport association approved agents instead of bill of lading for negotiation collection of shipping documents in respect of export transaction backed by letter of credits if the relative letter of credit specifically provides for negotiation of this document in lieu of billing billing lading even if the relative sale contract with the buyer overseas but does not provide for acceptance of fcr as a shipping document in lieu of bill of lading further uh, uh, the ad bank may at their discretion also accept fcr that is forwarders cargo receipts issued by shipping companies of repute uh, it approved agents for purchase of shipping uh, or purchase discount or collection of shipping documents even in cases where export transactions are not backed by letter of credit provided their relative sale contract with overseas buyer provide for acceptance of fcr as a shipping document in lieu of bill of lading so here um, uh, basically the focus is on in case when there is no bill of lading in case of c cargo uh, 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 transactions the forwarded cargo receipts as issued by uh, the ita approved agents would be considered uh, as an acceptance uh, accepted documents in case instead of uh, the uh, Uh, the bill of lading only if the export transactions are backed by letter of credit even even if uh, are not backed uh, by the letter of credit if the ad bank is satisfied that the relative sale contract provides for acceptance of fcr they may proceed uh, to con consider that as a shipping document in case of in, instead of a uh, bill of lading exemption from export declaration so where which so under which scenarios there is no requirement of uh, uh, providing a declaration of export trade sample of goods and publicly material supplied free of payment personal effects of travelers whether accompanied or unaccompanied goods supplied under the orders of central government gift of goods accompanied by declaration not more than 5 lakhs in value sorry aircraft or aircraft engine and spare parts subject to their reimport within 6 months goods imported free of cost on re-export basis following goods which are permitted by development commissioner of the scz and electronic hardware technology parks or stps or ftz which needs to be re-exported that is imported goods found defective goods imported from uh, foreign suppliers or collaborators on loan basis goods imported on from foreign suppliers or collaborators or free of cost found surplus after production operation so these goods the defective goods goods acquired on loan basis and goods acquired on free of cost if this goods are permitted by uh, the development um, commissioner of scz or any other technology or ftz par park can be uh, exported without a declaration good listed in the above clause that is uh, these three clauses to be exported by units in uh, scz under intimation to the development commissioner as uh, as we saw development commissioner of scz or concerned assistant or deputy commissioner of customs so this uh, has to be in, informed to these concerned authorities when it is uh, being exported replacement goods exported free of charge goods sent outside india for testing subject to reimport defective goods sent outside india for repair or reimport provided the goods are accompanied by a certificate uh, that after the re uh, uh, after the goods are sent for re repair or reimport it does not involve any it would be uh, again imported back and this 
export does not involve any transaction in foreign exchange so there is no consideration involved for this it has the goods have to go for repair and reimport outside india after that is being done again it would be received here in india exports permitted by rbi subject to conditions so any a uh, permitted exports by rbi based on specified conditions can be exported without any declaration so these were the procedural aspects for exports let us now focus on procedural aspects in case of imports settlement of outward remittance message with bill of entry based on the ad code declared by the importers the bank shall download the bill of entry issued by edi ports from boi masters in idmps idmps friends uh, we have seen uh, the full form being import data processing and monitoring system so this is a system for processing all the imports which are being uh, done from india so settlement of uh, outward remittance message with bill of entry in in case uh, this is being done the revised procedure the ad bank shall enter the bill of entry details like the bill of, bill of entry number port code date for orm associated with advance payments for import transactions as per the boi settlement in case of payment after receipt of boi the ad bank shall generate orm for uh, import payments so orm basically uh, friends is a, is a kind of a, a confirmation message when imports being done multiple orms can be settled against single boi and also a vice versa is possible on settlement of uh, uh, orm with evidence of import ad category bank shall uh, in all case issue an acknowledgement slip containing the details of uh, the importer the importer needs to preserve the printed imported copy as evidence of import so for for the purpose of import this word has to be followed uh, this procedure that uh, along with the bill of entry there would be a confirmation message that would be an orm that would be uh, confirmed by ad bank and that would serve as an acknowledgement for the import being done extension and write off ad category bank shall give extension for submission of b bill of entry beyond a prescribed period and the same will be reported in idmps as we saw as per the message bill of entry extension and the date up to so there is a prescribed proceed, uh, uh, time limit for submission of bo as we saw if that is uh, if there is a delay from the importer uh, in adhering to this timeline there can be some extension provided by the ad bank provided uh, it is reported in idmps as per the message bill of entry extension and the date of on up to which the extension is granted is indicated in the extension date column ad category banks can consider closure of boi or orm or idp that involves write off to an extent of 5% so write off is uh, available or uh, is possible to an extent of 5% of the invoice value in cases where the amount declared in boi varies from the actual remittance due to operational reasons and ad bank is satisfied with uh, the reason submitted by the importer so if there are genuine reasons and uh, the ad bank is satisfied they can allow a write off up to an extent of 5% of invoice value ad bank may close the boi for such import transactions where write off is on account of quality issue short shipment or destruction of goods as the matter subject to submission of satisfactory documentation irrespective of the amount involved so if there are these reasons uh, that is uh, if the write off is on account of quality issues short shipment or destructions the 5% criteria would not be applicable the write offs can be done uh, of whatever is the amount involved but the necessary documentation needs to be given and ad bank has to be satisfied ad bank shall settle and close orm with appropriate adjustment indicator in idmps idpms the above operational guidelines uh, for external extension and write off are meant to facilitate closure of bills in idm idpms and not to absolve the importer from remitting or receiving the amount in case of change in circumstances so this is nowhere uh, an indication wherein like the importer may not receive the amount that is not the scenario or, or the uh, uh, the regulation talking uh, talking about it is just a write off or, or uh, a facility provided to the importer in case there is an extension or write off scenario exists
extension and right of case is not covered by the may be referred to the consent so whatever the cases which are not covered above a uh, regional office needs to be take consider uh, taken into consideration for the purpose of uh, export and right of follow up for evidence of uh, import ad category bank shall continue to follow up for outward remittance in terms of the so again after the uh, uh, imports being done the ad category bank shall follow for outward remittance made for imports in cases where relevant evidence of import data is not available in id mps on due data due dates against the orm ad bank shall follow up with the import of a submission of documentary evidence of import similarly if boe data that is bill of entry data is not settled again orm within the prescribed period ad bank shall follow up so again after the import being done there has to be again a, a second check from the ad bank in terms of uh, uh, whether the payment is made the settlement has been done or not receipt of import documents directly imported di receipt of import documents by dire uh, importer directly from the overseas supplier receipt of documents may be may, uh, by the importer directly from us if the regulations are as follows should be received from the banker of the supplier by the banker of the importer so it, it has to be by the banker of the importer from the banker of the supplier ad bank id category bank should not make remittances when import have been received directly except in the following cases so in case there are uh, the importer is receiving directly the documents from overseas supplier ad bank should not make remittances however except in the following cases where the value of import bill does not exceeds usd 3 lakh import bill received by wholly owned indian subsidiary of foreign companies import bill received by status holder exporters 100% eous or units in secs public sector undertakings and limited companies import bill received by all limited companies public limited deemed public limited or private limited except for this scenario ad bank should not uh, make any remittances where import bills have been directly received by importer from overseas suppliers who are status holder as per as per ftp our business leaders who have excelled in international trade and have successfully contributed to countries foreign trade status holders are expected to not only contribute towards india's export but also provide guidance and hand holding to new entrepreneurs so after these things are done then uh, the status is regarded uh, or uh, uh, recognition is given as a status holder as per as FT ftp receipt of documents by importer directly from overseas suppliers in case of specified sectors ad category banks are permitted to allow remittances for import by non status holders up to up to usd 3 lakh where the import of rough diamonds rough precious and semi precious stones has received the import bills or documents directly from the overseas suppliers and documentary evidence for uh, import is submitted uh, by the importer at the time of remittance so in case specified scenarios in case of importer of rough diamonds rough precious and semi precious stones wherein the importer is directly receiving the receipt uh, the import documents from overseas supplier ad bank are permitted to allow remittance up to usd 3 lakh in case the above uh, uh, ceiling of 3 lakh does not apply to status holder importers the status holder importers are allowed to import directly from uh, this goods directly uh, the uh, the import documents in case of rough diamonds rough precious and semi precious directly from overseas suppliers without any specified limit so in case if at all you are a status holder importer no ceiling of usd 3 lakh would apply ad category bank again need not involve directly but in case they have to involve they can involve subject to following conditions import would be subject to prevailing ftt transactions based on the commercial judgment and satisfied an ad bank is satisfied about the bona fides of the transaction ad bank should do kyc and due diligence exercise before extending the fatal report uh, facility they should obtain a report of each individual overseas supplier from the overseas banker or reputed overseas credit rating agency so these uh, condition needs to be fulfilled for ad category bank when they allow uh, receipt of import documents directly uh, by the importer from overseas suppliers in case of import of rough diamonds rough precious and semi precious stones 
ad category bank so let's receipt of uh, import documents by ad category bank directly from overseas suppliers at the request of importer clients ad category can be a representative for importers however ad category has to be satisfied fully certified about the financial standing and track record so without that they cannot uh, act as a representative for the importer also they should obtain a report on each individual overseas supplier from the overseas banker or a reputed overseas credit agencies however such credit report need not be obtained in case the value does not exceed uh, usd 3 lakh provided is satisfied about the ad bank is satisfied about the bona fides of the transaction and track record of the importer constituent so these are the procedure in case of receipt of documents directly by the ad category one bank from overseas supplier evidence of import evidence of physical imports irrespective of the value of ex foreign exchange remitted or paid for import into india it is obligatory on the part of ad bank to ensure the submission of the following documents boe number port code and date following details and document that is the boe number port code date for marketing evidence of import under id pms customs assessment certificate of postal appraisal form or courier bill of entry issued by the importer where the import has been made uh, by post for goods imported and stored in warehouse in ftwz or scz unit uh, or uh, customs bonded warehouse the exchange control copy of the bo issued so these are the document these are the evidence which the ad bank needs to collect to ensure that proper or legit import has been done in respect of imports of delivery against uh, acceptance basis adb ad category bank shall verify the evidence of uh, import from id pms at the time of effective remittance so in case of import of delivery against acceptance basis however if importers fail to provide document evidence due to genuine reasons ad bank may allow reasonable time to the uh, importer ad bank are required to create create o, orm for all such auto remittance irrespective of value so in case of imports of delivery against acceptance basis uh, the check would be done at the time of uh, effecting remittances further ad banks may allow certain more uh, reasonable more time for for the importer and also there is an obligation on ad bank to create orm for the, that is outward remittance messages for uh, these uh, for such kind of remittances the time allowed by ad bank cannot exceed 3 months uh, from the date of remittances subsequent activities that is as we have seen that uh, they need to create orm and also perform subsequent activities per id pms guidelines what are the subsequent activities the document submission outward remittance data matching with orm and closing of transactions evidence of import in lieu of bill of entry in, instead of lieu bill of entry what can be an evidence of import a certificate from the ceo or auditor of the company the goods for which remittance was made have been actually imported in india provided the amount of foreign exchange is less than usd 1 million and the importer is a listed company in india whose net worth is at least 100 crores on the date of its last audited balance sheet or importer is a public sector company or an undertaking of gi or its department so in case these conditions are satisfied instead of bill of entry certificate from ceo or auditor of the company shall shall suffice as a proof for uh, import being done the above facility may also be extended to autonomous bodies including scientific bodies academic uh, institutions such as iit whose accounts are audited by cag means ad bank may issue a declaration from the auditor or ceo of such institutions Uh, that their accounts are audited again orm needs to be created and bo has to be downloaded from the boe master and id pms in case of non edi ports uh, uh, import through non edi ports the duplicate copy or custom certified copy have to be submitted so this facility can be um, extended to specified uh, institutions also provided uh, these conditions are being satisfied evidence of non physical imports where imports are made in non physical form such as software or through data or transmission something or through internet channels or through email a certificate from a ca shall suffice that there is a legit import being made and ad bank should also advise uh, importers to keep customs authority inform over the in imports made so uh, importers have to uh, inform to the customs authority ad bank has to follow up with the importers whether such 
information is being uh, given to the customs authority or not and additionally a certificate from ca would be required to confirm import is being made follow up for import evidence in case import does not furnish importer does not furnish any documentary evidence within 3 months ad bank ad bank uh, shall follow up for the next 3 months by using various modes of communication however at least one month communication one communication with the report so uh, 3 months time are given for following up for the for the import evidence uh, so 3 months is given to the importer another 3 months would be given by the ad bank uh, 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 in in terms of follow or follow up so it has to rigorously follow up for the next 3 months in case the importer is not cooperating and pro and communicate through all modes of communications out of which at least one communication should be uh, through a registered letter so the ad bank has to ensure the communication whatever communication they make in the next three months at least one communication should be through a registered letter so that has to uh, that follow-up has to be done by the ad bank verification of uh, import evidence and payments in, in, internal inspectors and information systems auditors shall shall carry out a verification and systems audit and assurance of the boe settlement data and process followed by uh, ad bank for settlement should be prescribed in terms of the guidelines under cyber security framework in the bank they shall carry out verification of the dummy evidence and input other than which sorry uh, other than which are available in uh, idpms documents as evidencing import into should be preserved by for a period of one year so, so a kind of systems audit would be done in ad bank wherein like uh, the idpms that uh, systems would be checked against uh, each and every boi settlement the imports being made and uh, there would be verification of documents as well so here uh, the role of ad banks become very much imperative when it comes to import also uh, and additional responsibilities have been given to ad bank as well uh, in terms of follow up or uh, in terms of uh, ensuring the follow up for import evidence follow up for remittances for everything and also assisting in the uh, verification and systems audit processing of import related payments through op gsp op gsp online payment gateway service providers so uh, ad caribbean can offer payment facility for imports not exceeding uh, usd 2000 by entering into a standard so uh, the ceiling limit is uh, uh, maximum USD 2 lakh in case of uh, payments through OPGSP. Again, there as well, the, the following condition needs to be satisfied. The balance held in the import collection account shall be remitted uh, not later than two days from the date of credit off to the collection account. AD cop, uh, category bank will obtain a copy of invoice and airway bill from the OPGSP containing the name the particulars of the uh, beneficiary as evidence of import and report the transaction in R return. R return is a control return for foreign exchange transaction which is submitted to the RBI Forex department. Permitted credits and debits. Permitted credits in the OPGSP import collection account. Collection from Im Indian importers for online purchases and chargeback from the overseas exporters. Permitted debits. Payment to overseas exporters. Payment to Indian importers for returns. Payment of commission at uh, commission at rates frequency as defined under contract bank charges. So these are debits and these are credits in the OPGSP uh, import collection account. Settlement of import transactions in currencies not having a direct exchange rate. Uh, where, where there is a, a settlement of transactions and import transactions in currencies which does not have a direct exchange rate. Uh, it is uh, the May permit settlement while where the invoicing uh, so the AD category bank uh, can permit settlement of such uh, import transactions but the settlement takes in the currency of beneficiary which through uh, which though convertible does not have uh, excluding those put through ACU mechanism subject to conditions as under so now in in in, in uh, scenario where uh, the settlement is not possible uh, because the currency does not have a direct exchange rate the ad bank shall uh, permit these settlement provided importer shall be a customer of the ad bank signed contract invoice is in a freely convertible currency the beneficiary is willing to receive the payment in the currency of beneficiary instead of original currency as full and final settlement ad bank is satisfied with the bona fides of the transaction so here uh, uh, 
this is possible that uh, may permit the ad bank may permit settlement of uh, these type of import where the invoicing is freely uh, is in a freely convertible currency but the settlement takes in the currency of beneficiary so the invoice is being raised in uh, freely convertible but the beneficiary says that uh, he wants the payment in uh, in, in some uh, other currency which is not the in, uh, the currency which is mentioned in the invoice so ad bank can do that provided these conditions are satisfied however the counterparty to the importer must not be a from a country or jurisdiction in the updated F FATA public statement on high risk and non cooperative jurisdictions which are as of now north korea and iran so if the beneficiary is from north korea or iran this facility won't be uh, available for the uh, importers for settlement so these were some of the thoughts friends on the uh, export and import procedures uh, uh, relating to uh, uh, prescribed under fema Thank you, friends.